Evolution geared loosely towards the Irish Leaving Cert course. A definition of evolution is the way in which living organisms change genetically to produce new forms of life over long periods of time. Our understanding of evolution has to be based upon the work of two men in particular, Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace, both working independently came up with the same theories. When Darwin received letters from Alfred Russell Wallace confirming the same findings as he, this prompted him to go public with his theory. Darwin's theory of evolution known as natural selection was published in a book entitled The Origin of the Species. The key to understanding this process of evolution is to recognise that it's driven by genetic variation. Without genetic variation, there simply would be no evolution. Genetic variation is differences in our genome. It's differences in the A's, T's, G's and C's of the DNA that makes you, you. These differences could result in the formation of different alleles, alternative versions of the same gene, one of the reasons why you have different eye colours. Evolution is only driven by those genetic variations which are passed on from parent to offspring, so inherited variations. What causes or gives rise to this genetic variation in the first place? Well, sexual reproduction is one. Another cause could be mutations. There are chromosomal and then there are gene mutations. Chromosomal mutations include changes to their structure and also incorrect numbers of chromosomes. A gene mutation is changes in the structure or the amount of DNA. It could mean deleting some types of bases, inserting others or changing some about. The cause of such mutations can be varied. Sometimes they just occur spontaneously. Genetic change can happen because of exposure to mutagenic agents. Mutagens include the chemicals in cigarette smoke, exposure to radiation and exposure to hazardous chemicals also. Evolution is a really complex, enormous topic and the best way to understand it is to go back to Darwin's voyage to the Galapagos Islands. Darwin aboard the HMS Beagle arrived at the Galapagos Islands which are located off the coast of Ecuador. The Galapagos Islands are an archipelago, so they're a group of islands located in the Pacific Ocean, uh, about 600 kilometers from the mainland, and they were formed by volcanic action. Darwin spent a number of weeks on these islands where he collected various specimens, among which were many varieties of birds. Back in the UK, Darwin presented his specimens to an ornithologist, a bird specialist in one of the museums, who informed him that he'd actually collected a number of species of finch. These birds were very similar, they only really differed by the shape of their beaks. So Darwin began to trace back from what island each bird with a particular beak came from. Darwin was able to make a link between the type of beak the finch had and the food source that was most abundant on the island the finch came from. Some beaks were adapted to splitting hard seeds, others were adapted to eating particular insects, others were well suited to getting the pollen out of particular cactus plants. Many of the individual islands were home to a number of species of finch, all living together in harmony. They lived in harmony together because they occupied different niches. Their beaks enabled them to feed off different foodstuffs and so they weren't in competition with each other. Noting how similar the finches were, Darwin concluded that they must have come from the mainland, from a common ancestor. So this original group of finches coming from the mainland were all the one species, however they did have those genetic variations. This original group of finches would have landed on different islands where the flora and fauna were completely different. If genetic variation gave rise to the beak that was best suited to the food source on that island, well then that particular group of finches would have survived, thrived and passed on that trait. So only those groups of finches that were best adapted to each particular island survived, thrived, passed on the gene and slowly the genome altered over time. When genomes alter slowly over time, it gives rise to new species. This is known as speciation. A species is when you have a group of similar organisms and they're capable of interbreeding to produce fertile offspring. Darwin said of speciation, it is the mystery of mysteries. How did these new species of finch form? One theory is geographic isolation. The finches were just so far apart on the separate islands and those that were on the same island were possibly separated by a mountain or by a river. This separation reduced the gene flow, so they really just mated amongst themselves and slowly the genome altered over time. So if they ever did meet the other finches, they were incapable of breeding. They had formed a new species. The next theory is reproductive isolation. Something happened to prevent birds with one type of beak from mating with the birds of a different type of beak. This reduction in gene flow meant that slowly over time they formed their own species. So what do you need to know for your exam? You need to first state that the theory of evolution, natural selection, was put forward by Darwin and also by Wallace. 
It's based on three observations, which led to two conclusions. Observation number one. Organisms seem to overbreed. They tend to produce many offspring or children, leading to observation number two. Even though these organisms tend to overbreed and have many offspring, the numbers seem to stay the same within the population. Based on these two observations, let's make a conclusion. Organisms tend to overbreed and produce many offspring, but the general population numbers seem to stay relatively the same, so many must die off. This means that there must be some struggle for survival. Observation number three. When you look at populations of organisms, although very similar, there are differences, and these differences must be down to genetic variation, leading to conclusion number two. If the genetic variation leads to beneficial traits, well then nature will select those beneficial traits. That organism will survive, thrive, breed and pass on that trait. Some beneficial traits would be echolocation, the ability to fight infection, being able to run faster to get away from predators, excellent eyesight so that you can hunt better, camouflage to avoid predators. All of these are great beneficial traits. They give the organism the edge. They enable it to survive, thrive and pass on that gene. This is natural selection, how populations change slowly over time. Where is our proof of evolution? There are many ways to prove evolution and we are going to choose fossils. These are the compressed remains of plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. The benefit of fossils is that they can be dated and they show how an organism changed over time. And as you examine fossils, they usually show increasing complexity with time. The horse is one organism whose complete evolutionary history can be accounted for with the use of fossils. When paleontologists examined the horse fossils, the earliest horse was something akin to the size of a fox. As time went by, it increased slowly in size and also complexity with feet changing and the skull changing greatly, eventually reaching a stage where it becomes more recognisable as modern day horse. Mary Annie is one person that you should take time to look up. She was born in Lyme Regents in the 1700s. She was an expert fossil collector and paleontologist. She was voted one of the top 10 women contributors to science by the Royal Society and is definitely worth looking up. This TED-Ed talk, Evolution in a Big City, is examining how evolution is hitting New York City. So check it out, it's worth watching. As always, your textbook and syllabus are your number one resources, as is listening to your teacher. The very best of luck. Please note that all of the icons are from the Noun Project. I am a pro member, but I still want to credit all the artists and they are listed in the credits and in the description on the YouTube video.